Hi and welcome to Phoenix TV, the TV show that follows Manchester's fastest and most exciting sports team, the Manchester Phoenix. On this week's show, as always, we have player interviews and match highlights, and we're going to start, as always, with hockey news and Tambo. How's it going, mate? You all right? Uh, not too bad. Uh, yesterday, honestly, they shouldn't be allowed to have Saturdays off. <laughs> they had to go shopping, then more shopping, then the garden, God knows what else. Never again. No more Saturdays off. See, you should have come down to the GB fundraiser we had. It was a right good old time. Could have got you in a sledge, taking shots at a GB keeper. Think if think if nothing in, else, it would have been funny. I was in Tesco's. <laughs> right. Round up, couple of little bits. Chris Wiggins of MK allegedly having constructive surgery on his knee. There's also another little thing saying he's warming up tonight. So uh, I thought miracles only happened at Christmas, but there we go. But anyway, Chris, I'm glad to see you back. Luke Ferrara, that pain in the posterior from Peterborough every time we play them, he signed two-way deal with Cardiff Devils. A lot of promise in this kid. He's only 19. He's looking really good. Can't see Peterborough keeping him next season the way he's going. Right, a couple of midweek games. Swindon 8, Slough 5. Goals galore. The Wildcats goals coming from Aaron Nell, two from Hoog, two from Perkio, and a hat-trick for the new boy Sandvik. Slows, Kiris, Long, and a Bakalik hat-trick, so a bit of a game down there. Pasha Gominic picked up a five-plus game for high sticks on Aldridge. Rock was pulled at the end of the second half after shipping four goals in that period. And Pliskowskis, your mate, he picked up another ten-minute misconduct. Fun down there. Peterborough three, Telford one. All happened in the first period here with Brittle giving Telford the lead, then Andre Lauko taking over with a hat-trick in two minutes, 54 seconds. That finished the scoring, but the obligatory fight that we seem to get down at Peterborough in every game to keep the locals happy happened in the third period, with Burroughs and Pollard having a bit of a do. On to Saturday and a rematch between Telford and Peterborough. Telford 2, Peterborough 5. Phantoms again took the points. Tigers goals from Priest and Kruzik, but the Phantoms through Hook, Zadine, Carlin, and two more from Andre Lauko gave them valuable playoff points. Bit of a shock down at Milton Keynes. Milton Keynes 1, Sheffield Steel Dogs 2 in overtime. Inform Lightning, they got beaten by Sheffield in an overtime goal from Ben Morgan. Just 50 seconds left in the overtime. Bebris gave them the lead, but Adam Carr equalised in the second period. No more goals, but the referee had a bit to do there again. A 10-minute misconduct for Gibson and Krisky a 2 plus 10 for a check from behind. Apparently the Sheffield import goalie Sedlar had a stellar game. Right, there were two other games left, as we didn't have one, and 26 goals in, both, in these two games. Guildford 7, Bracknell 6 in overtime. What a game at the library in Guildford. Happy gave the home side the lead after 53 seconds. They then traded four goals with a second for Hoppy, one from Kvetan, apparently from the halfway line. Then uh, Thompson and Massa got these goals. Three in the second, the Smittle and Holland for the Flames, and Thompson getting his second. Couldn't be separated again in the third with Longstaff and Lydiard. Thompson getting his hat trick, followed by a Strichek goal in the last minute. Sharp's contribution to the game was a 10 minute misconduct after 45 minutes. Two oldies, as you know better, had a bit of a do. Josef Kohut and Martin Massa. They both picked up game misconducts in overtime after a check from behind from Kohut and a slash by Massa. I just wonder if uh, the fact that one of them's a check and the other one's a Slovak had anything to do with that, but uh, apparently there's a bit of history there. The winning goal by David Savage came on 63 minutes. And the last one, Slough 7, Basingstoke Bison 6, a penalty shot win there. Basingstoke came back from the dead in the last 10 minutes. Long, Bakalik, two from Wales and two from Davis. Redmond and two from Rand for Basingstoke made it 6-3 with 10 minutes to go. Chambers, Shipper and Rowan all scored within seven minutes of each other to tie the game. Now in overtime and Darius Pliskowskis can't get away from him. Hit the penalty shot winner. And another high stick game penalty here for Joe Miller. Just don't get me started on this high stick rubbish again. I've got a feeling there could be a rank coming, boys and girls, so get ready and brace yourselves. Ah, well, really. I mean, everybody, I keep saying it and saying it, and the same thing comes back. The double IHF want it, so we're sticking with it. It's madness. Absolute madness. Two for a high stick, five for this blood. Get on with the game. Let's have some common sense into it. I'm getting fed up with this one now. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Um, I suppose we better show people where that leaves everyone in the table. Yes, I think so. Uh, 
Guildford, 64 points. Basingstoke, 64 points. But Guildford's got two games in hand. We're still sitting in third with 55. Milton Keynes on 50. Slough on 50. Swindon, 46. Peterborough, 43. Bracknell, 42. Sheffield, 35, with only 10 games left. They have a lot to do to make it up. And Telford, unfortunately, were confirmed as not making the playoffs after the two defeats at the weekend. And they're on 15 points. Well, on to tonight, Pete. We've got Guildford tonight and Wednesday. Yeah, um, it's kind of a, a bit of a weird one, isn't it? We've, we've had a pretty good games against them. The last two have gone to Guildford, unfortunately, in the Cup semi-final first leg, and obviously last Saturday. Um, we've got to admit, if we play like we did on Saturday against the Flames, and that and circumstances are slightly different, we'll leave it there. Um, I can't see why we can't take points out of this one. I thought we played really, really well down in Guildford. Maybe controversial, but I don't think Guildford deserved, sort of played well enough to, to win the game as such. And I think we deserved at least a point out of it. So I'm, I'm still pretty optimistic. Yeah, well, I deliberately didn't go to last weekend's game, so I'll end up getting in trouble. A few things disappointed, I think, is the best thing we could say on that. That's probably the best way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. We'll, leave, we'll leave there. We'll, we'll leave I, I don't it. think we were, Neil wants another one of those letters saying, you know, dear Miss Morris, please can you send a cheque for so many thousand pounds because people have said horrible things about us. But just take it out of your wages, mate. <laughs> I think I'm already in the, like, the minus already, so we'll, yeah, right. we'll definitely leave it there. Well, I think tonight, uh, I noticed that uh, Rempel is playing and Coat is not, so that's their rotating their 26 imports. <laughs> <laughs> Five, really, but there we go. Uh, notice Joachim Flatten was on a real good go on warm-up, so it looks like he might be giving a go tonight. Yeah, Still I've... no Stevie phone, though. That's still a big blow. It is, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I think the, the day off we had yesterday will do us great. I think it'll kind of... They won't get a bit more rest, um, so I'm hoping that you know the guys come out with the energy they showed last last Saturday. Um, yeah, I think Joachim being back will be obviously a big big help. I think I think he's chomping at the bit to kind of get back on the ice, uh, and obviously we've got Tony back as well. Which, regards, you know you love him or you hate him, depending, he's going to improve any side no matter who he plays for. So, yeah, I think I think it's going to be a good game regardless. Well, I think I think I think we can take it. So, uh, just about time to go and. Do what we got to do and uh... Yep. What's that over there? Let's go play some hockey. Lundin back in his own zone, fires it into open ice. It'll be picked up by Andre Pozzaville. He fires it onto the wing, tipped nicely through and away. Come the Phoenix hand into the zone, two on one. He waits, he slides it across and Lundin blocks the pass getting through. The net comes off. Two early chances for the Phoenix, but this time Jez Lundin making the stop on the pass from hand. Flatten takes the hit from Jez Lundin. Pozzaville lurking as usual as Flatten muscles his way through and then leaves it for Michael Cerny. Pozzaville going towards the net. Flatten down low, backhander is saved by Lee. Hand digs his stick out, throws it through the crease. It breaks to the other side. Cerny is at the blue line. He shoots Lee with the save, rebounds there. Great stop, Mark Lee on Joachim Flatten. And has the puck on the hash marks the goal has come off Mark Lee stood there saying the goal is off and Andy Miller finally spots it the goal was dislodged for a good 20 seconds as Mark Lee stood with his hand on the crossbar Michael Cerny put it in the goal obviously disallowed because the net was off but how the officials didn't spot that I'm not entirely sure it's good to be back in the Premier League Face off is won by Melly Cherick. Thrown towards the net, was up high, and it comes off the helmet of George L. Hodge. Oh, the Flames flatten coming in on the four check. Kvetan's pass was a risky one. He gets away with it, and Longstaff backhands it through. It's kept onside. Kvetan shoots and scores. Very nicely worked by the Flames as they turn defence into attack. Kvetan just kept it in at the blue line and snaps it past George L. Hodge. It's been all Phoenix pressure, but the Flames have the first goal. It's Phoenix nil, Guildford one. Back to the line, Kvetan shoots wide, rebound was there, Rempel denied. And the puck will break to the half boards. Kvetan just about keeps it in, into the slot. Rempel fans on the one time, but Dixon at the line, down into the corner it goes, and now back to Dixon again. Dixon playing it in behind the net, pops over the stick along staff. 
who now gets it back in the corner at the blue line. Kvetan shoots El Hadj, saw it all the way. Deflected up in the air, Duggan gets it cleared. Kvetan at centre ice, long shot comes off the blocker of George El Hadj, and the whistle goes for an icing call. Gets hit, Hemmings ties up his stick, but Hand comes away. With the puck, Cerny trying to come out near side and he scores! Michael Cerny, lovely little drag to bring it out from behind the goal. No way Mark Lee was expecting that. And Cerny banks it in off the Guildford netminder. He's got 34 on the season. It's no more than the Phoenix deserve. It's Manchester 1, Guildford 1. Cerny back to Schnabel at the line. The shot gets blocked, Cerny. Picks it up, a bouncing puck, so he finds Hand in the corner. Hand into the slot, Michael Cerny puts it wide. Brilliantly worked by the Phoenix, but Cerny couldn't quite get his wrister on the goal. OK, confused of Altrincham here with Phoenix TV. I've got a couple of sports groups here with me tonight. I've got uh, the boss, Richard, and I've got a football team and a cricket team. And I've slept since they told me who it was, so I'm going to ask them again. Which you are... Woodbank Cricket Club. Woodbank Cricket Club. And your name? Olivia. And yours? Sophie. And I've got a football club here. What? The... Walsh Park. And what age group? Um, under nines. Under nines. And your name? Harry. Jacob. Right. Ask the kids first and I'll get on to the adults. You've been here before? Yeah. Every Sunday. Oh, you're a real fan. And where's your shirt? Oh, great. Where is it? You should have brought it on telly. Sorry. All right. <laughs> You've been before? Yeah. Oh, so you're both old hands then. How are we going to do tonight? Uh, win. Well, we're going to win. win. Good, good. Right. What about you boys? Have you been before? Yeah, I'm her sister. No, no, you're her brother. <laughs> She's your sister. Do <laughs> you realise that you're going to get some stick for that at school after when they see that on television? And you? You've been before? Yeah. Oh, so you're all good fans then? Ah, oh, great. Well, I'll be listening for noise from the club. Richard, if you just come in and have a quick word with you, please. It's pretty good for the, the club to have this community sports thing that gets, gets all the clubs into it. I mean, you've got quite a few here tonight. It is. We've got about 48 of us come down here, and we came last season as well. And there's a few of us since, since it came down last season have started coming every single week. So we've brought some more people down here, so hopefully they'll come on board with the club as well and, um, and keep coming every week. Oh, it's the future generation. It's what we need. We, we're not getting any younger, are we? You might not. Well, I'm not. <laughs> Guys, thanks very much for coming. Big shout for Phoenix over there when you get back, please. And uh, thank you. His stick, but Cerny gets it through to flatten it, runs around to Tony Hand in the corner. And Hand will find Michael Cerny. Hand is on the hash marks back door and they score. It's the patented Phoenix power play move again, and the Guildford Flames are still not wise to it. Luke Boothroyd sneaks in, 12th goal of the season, and the dopey penalty in the first by Andy Hemmings come back to haunt the flame in the second. It's Phoenix 2, Guildford 1. James Neal. Neal carries the puck ahead into the zone. Plays it back door. Trying to roof it was Michael Cerny, but Lee gets across, and Cerny couldn't quite get enough height on the puck to beat the Guildford netminder. Gets the pass at the blue line. Phoenix into the zone, back ended towards the slot, but Savage knocked it away from Joachim Flatten. The Flames fire the pass ahead, and it's David Longstaff trying to dance his way through. He keeps the puck good, saved by El Hadj. The rebound's there, the Flames can't find it. El Hadj diving out, and it's Michael Cerny that brings it away and plays it onto the wing. 
Ames going for a long pass, poor change by the Phoenix. Rempel is in front, good pad stop, El Hajj, and the rebound well blocked by James Neal. Martin trying to knock that loose puck down, the Flames try to chop it clear. Phoenix will come in short-handed down the wing, but the whistle has gone for something. Not past Tony Hand by Kometan. Big shot, El Hajj makes the stop, the loose puck's there, and El Hajj dives on top of it. On his backhand back door, and it's tapped in. Milos Melicerik it was, who was all alone at the back post, and all he had to do was guide it in. And we are all square once again. It's Phoenix 2, Guildford 2. Just a long pass again, it's a nice one, and Liam Chong will gain the zone. Plays it across the ice, it's Bentham, he shoots, he rings it off the pipe, and Lee finds the loose puck. Next to his glove and covers it up. Great play. Comes out sharp angle right through the legs of George L. Hatch. And David Longstaff has another goal. The Phoenix coverage again. Just let David Longstaff come out from behind the goal line. And this time L. Hatch couldn't stop him. It's Phoenix 2, Guildford 3. Okay, Phoenix TV here. And I'm here with... Uh one of our photographers, Lauren, who's been doing a little bit of a project uh, for the club. And apparently it's a, a cookbook, a recipe book. Yeah, this is an idea that I had for quite a while. Um, and this year it just felt right to bring it out. So we got the guys together, uh, got them to come, come up with like some things that they like to eat. And then I researched it all, photographed it all. Um, and yeah, it's out today. I dread to think what James Archer and James Neal came up with on that one. Um, there was a lot of steak. We like steak. Um, but James Neal said to me, oh, I really like beans uh, and toast and sausages. And I was like, it's not a meal, that fella. Um, but no, I, I turned it into a casserole. Good. So, you know. Yeah, you don't want to give away too many secrets because we won't be able to buy it. And I understand that uh, it will be out on sale very soon. Yes. Supposedly it's here today, but check next week. Game time next week, hopefully. I know it's been printed. And... Don't tell us, don't tell us who it was. But what's what's your favourite recipe in the book? Um, it's been so long since I've looked at it. I like the sweet stuff though. There's some really nice sweet stuff in there. I can't imagine hockey players going for sweets, but there we go. This cheesecake and all sorts. It's it's nice. Did you enjoy the project? Yes, it was very different because I'm not used to photographing food. So it's nice to expand into something that it's still hockey related because it's it's what the boys like. But photographing food is something completely different. So having to come up with all new and interesting ways of photographing spices and herbs and, and like lighting really dark liquid chocolate and making it look nice. It was a bit of a challenge, but it's all good fun. Oh, it looks good in your CV. It does. Hopefully it'll look good in print as well. Well, let's hope it's a big success, Lauren. You've, I know you, you, you've worked really, very hard on that one, so best of luck with it. Thank you. Go buy it. Mosseville. Mosseville on to the wing, flat and deflects it through, kind bounce off the linesman, in comes Cerny, he keeps, he shoots, Lee well out of the goal, makes the save, and the whistle has gone, I don't know what for, but the whistle's gone, skating back, gets it around the boards to Jess London, Duggan coming in, the puck is played up, and Hoppe it is that tips it through, Flames into the zone, Potts slides it across, it's played in front and comes off the helmet of El Hadj and bounces away. Arthur gets back in a hurry to tidy up. And away comes the big defenceman carrying the puck up the ice, he stops, he shoots, glove save, Mark Lee. 
Robert Schnabel went coast to coast and is denied by the Guildford netminder. It'll come around the boards to Liam Chong, who keeps it nicely away from Paul Dixon. Bent the backhands it through with a shot from McKinney, goes just wide. And the pass finds Tony Hand. Hand slides it across. It's Boothworth, the shot misses wide of the near post. Curtis Uppy was all over Michael Cerny as he crashed the net there. But again, the officials don't spot it. It's an icing call on Guildford. Backhands it through. Chong leaves it there nicely. Bentham backhands in behind the net. Chong has it again. Went for that no look backhand pass. Down he goes. And Andy Miller decides that that will be a penalty. As now there's a push and a shove after the whistle. Nathan Rempel's in there. Bentham's in there as well. Rempel and McKinney it is that will be separated. And after missing so many of the obvious calls, Andy Miller decides that Branislav Kvetan has tripped the Phoenix player, and it's a Manchester power play. Backhand into the slot, hand will clear the loose puck away. Bentham knocks it down, and away come the Phoenix as Bentham looks to skip his way through. Flatten onto the loose puck, good stop by Lee. The rebound bounced up high in the air. Schnabel pinching in, but the Flames intercept, and away comes Branislav Kvetan. He will take as long as he can. He shoots it. High over the top of the goal, and it's bounced in. Well, I've got absolutely no idea how that's bounced in. I think it's hit the plexi, hit George L. Hodge, and bounced into the goal. It is the cruelest of blows for the Manchester Phoenix, but Guildford have soaked up the pressure for 19 minutes and 10 seconds, and it'll be a Kvetan goal. It's Phoenix 2. Guildford 4. Puck is dropped and the Guildford Flames soaked up the pressure. It was a valiant effort from the Manchester Phoenix. But in the end, the Guildford Flames keep the pressure on at the top of the table. The final score tonight is Manchester Phoenix 2, the Guildford Flames 4. Phoenix TV here, I'm here with uh, David Longstaff. You still look, it's not a great hair to be seen. There's a couple on the side, you know. Got, well, you're obviously not using the right I'm stuff, are you? I'm gonna have to, you look good with great hair. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm leaving. as handsome as you, I'll take that. Well, there you go, you're a bit to go. Anyway, good game of hockey again tonight, you know. Two goals at a crucial time, really. Yeah, um, I, I thought Manchester were really good. Obviously, to come and win here is a huge thing for us. Manchester had our number, and the last time we came in here, we got killed, so. To win it tonight, 4-2, everyone's happy in that dressing room. Yeah, there was a lot of smiles coming off. I mean, pretty even hockey game really all night. Yeah, two teams are, I would say, there's nothing between the two teams and it's going to be a lucky bounce like the fourth goal or maybe it's a, a turnover or a mistake. And we were fortunate tonight that we, we got a couple of those. But you're in good form. You know, you, you, you turn around, that little little dodgy blip, but you, you, you've come back strong and uh, you, you really are you're looking pretty good for defending it at the moment. Uh, we don't want to speak too early. All we're trying to do is one game at a time. Uh, just, I think there's 10 games left and Basingstoke got 8, Manchester have got 10, so we're just trying to knock one game off at a time and try and stay at the top or at least uh, be around about there. Oh, absolutely. The league's never won in February, is it? Yeah, exactly. And like we say, it's not like we're, we're up against teams that aren't as good as us. These teams are just as good as us and it's going to be a lucky bounce here or there that's going to win it, so we're going to have to keep working hard. Well, we've still got two games against each other to come yet. Yeah, we've got the game on Wednesday night in Guildford and then the, obviously the second leg of the Cup semi-final, which is... Even a two goal leads nothing. So, like we say, these, these teams are so evenly matched, it's going to be a bounce here or then. Whoever gets a lucky bounce is going to win the game. David, thanks for coming out to us and safe journey back. Thank you, Jim, no problem. Phoenix TV here, uh, final score tonight Manchester Phoenix 2, Guildford Flames 4. I'm here with skipper and man of the match, Luke Boothroyd. Luke, it was a pretty even game, tough result to take tonight. Yeah, it was more of a one goal game. They got a lucky one at the end there, but I think. Obviously, the effort level was there. Maybe we could have finished a, a couple more chances, and I think that could have that could have been the difference. Really, that we just didn't take a couple of chances. But it was a good game, you know, uh, fast-paced, skillful game, which unfortunately we just got edged out on. Well, that's right. I mean, we, we had plenty of chances. Uh, we didn't get the break of the puck a couple of times, where it just seemed to fall onto the, the D-man stick and away rather than for, for the forward there. Yeah, I mean, we, was, we didn't get some of the bounces, but you can't you can't blame it all on bounces, I guess. So, a lot of the time you make your own look but um, you know we got them again on Wednesday so hopefully we can sort of reverse the scoreline 
Yes, of course, I and mean, we've got the big big one in the Cup semi-final as well, which 6-4, uh, all to play for. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, <clears throat> we, we've beat them here by more than two goals, you know, more than once this season, so we're not out of it by, by any means. So, obviously, we're going to come out hard and, you know, right, right from the get-go, just try and get all over them and try and get some goals early and get right on top of them. And say we've still got a, got a few weeks yet, gear up to the playoffs, which is... Uh, <laughs> Tough quarterfinals, two legs against anybody, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, you could argue, say it's anybody's, but um, you know, regardless of what the seedings say, but there's going to be some good matchups, that's for sure. Um, whoever we get, obviously, you know, we're going to going to do the best we can, and you know, hopefully get to Coventry because that's you know, it's a great weekend to play in, you know, with all the fans there, and you know, we have the best following, best fans, so it's really good, you know, to to get there and play in front of them. At, at Coventry for you know for the playoffs. Okay, I'm so good to aim for it, aim for it, and uh, thanks very much, Luke, for tonight, and uh, good luck on Wednesday. Thank you very much. Right, Phoenix TV, it's time again for the post-game show, and I'm here with uh, Joachim Flatten. Hi, Joachim. Hi, how are you? And the boss. How are you doing, guys? We okay? Joachim, good to see you back on the ice tonight. You know, after the injury, good to be back. Nice to be doing it. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, it felt, uh, felt good. Uh, obviously, uh, I've been out for, for three weeks and um, haven't been skating, so uh, we tried to get in a gym, but you're, it's a little bit restricted. Uh, you can't do the stuff you normally do, uh, so you just have to try to change the things up a little bit and get a good workout in and, and, and try to be prepared for, for the uh, when, when you're going to come back. But um, you, uh, it's always always tough to be out, uh, even though it's just a week or a month or two months. Um, uh, it, it's tough to co come back, and especially against uh, Guildford, like a top team. Um, but I, I I felt pretty good out there today, and um, I think we played a pretty good game. Actually, we didn't have the bounces. Yes, yeah, certainly. said it's just you've got to get your ice legs back. That's really what you've got to do. But Guildford are a tough team, and but I thought we matched them. In fact, well, we played them for long periods as well. You know, I say it finished four-two, but uh, there wasn't two goals between the teams really tonight. No, definitely not. Um, I think we we played a good game. We once again we have troubles. We, we missed a lot of shots tonight. Actually, we we we, we missed a net uh, itself, and that's uh, something we have to change up. Uh, and focus on in, in practice and and, uh, and bring the next game, sir. I need to need to hit the net in order to to score goals, and uh, or if not, the, the puck is going to bounce out, and we're going to get rebounds. So we need to perfect that a little bit. But that, overall, I think we played a good game, and they had a couple of lucky bounces. So, oh, Neil, say. We need to talk about George. I mean, I thought he had an outstanding period of hockey there tonight. Kept us in it with some big, big saves. It's, it's tough on a kid, isn't it? I think it's very tough. I think Joachim will agree, and I'll come to him in a minute. But, you know, you, you, you've got to put this in perspective, Jim, and, and Joachim's been in hockey a long while now. He'll, 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 he'll sound this out with me. We're asking a young 18-year-old lad to step up to the number one swat, uh, spot here, you know, and do as good a job as Stevie Phone. And to be fair, he's had to get his match fitness together. He's suddenly looking at all the angles of the rinks. He's got so much to learn in such a little time, you know, and, and he's got players coming at him, you know, left, right and centre. And, and it is a very, very big ask. And, and if, you, if you look at overall what he's giving us, he's probably giving us way, way above what we can expect and I know I know the fans want more and more but you know you have to look at things and you have to be honest and say look you know as a team I don't know any other team that could have had as many injuries and as many problems as we've had this year and still be sat in third place if you want the truth and I think to still be sat in third place still be in the cup you know and, and still have a good chance of going to the playoffs in a good position I think is a testament to the rest of the squad what do you think Joachim? Yeah definitely and, and uh, back to George there I, I think he does a tremendous job and uh, if you take the, the regulations, the league regulations into consideration here, it's really tough for, for a player to develop, especially a backup goalie, to develop in the league below and then come in and, and be ready to perform. Uh, Georgie was basically just thrown into this situation and I think he does, does a really good job. I think, you know, that, that I think it's something we all talk about. It's something I know that I've brought up at board meetings, Jim. I'm going to be bringing it up again. You know, the deadline of the 31st of January is, is very early for us to, uh, to know whether we need any more players. And I think there needs to be a few changes because I think, if you you know, if you get a back, a, a, a goalkeeper hurt, 
you need to be able to replace and, and, and not just rely on your young and up-and-coming backups. And I think that's very unfortunate. And the 15-game the rule that they play against us, that doesn't help. And if, we're, if, we are, if we are, and I don't want to ask for an argument and people getting on and asking me to come to board level to answer, but you know, if we are a development league, then let's start developing and let's start thinking that way because these rules make it very, very difficult for teams like us. And a lot of the fans here don't realise that you know we haven't been able to sign anybody and we haven't been able to bring any cover in. And it's, it's such a difficult scenario to be in. And I, I agree with Joachim, I think the lad's done a great job for us uh, and I think he's punching way above his weight and that isn't meant to be rude to him because I think he's learning his craft live with some very, very big teams, you know, um, and, and I think as a squad, we're playing well and, you know, I've just had some fans say to me, do you think you can beat him on Wednesday if you can't beat him tonight? You know what? Yeah, I thought we could beat him today if you want the truth. We went to Guildford last week, it was a one goal game in my eyes and we were well in it, you know, uh, we brought Joachim and Tony back tonight and, and I think things will get better and better for us and I think we're a very competitive squad and with or without certain players, I think we're capable of winning in any night. What do you think, Joachim? Yeah, definitely. We've still got a lot to play for. I mean, yeah, this, is, this, is, this, is only Feb this is only February. We've got a, a good cup semi-final. Well, there's only two goals in it. Yeah. We've then got the playoffs to, to, to qualify for, which are going to be two tough games no matter who we play, and get to Coventry in front of uh, 500 Phoenix fans. I mean, we've still got everything to aim for. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think um, even though we're... Um, it's disappointing now to yeah. maybe realize that we're not going to uh, clinch the league. Uh, still, we have a lot to play for, and um, that's definitely going to keep us uh, motivated, and, and we're uh, going to be ready for that uh, cup uh, semi-final. Yeah. Totally agree, Jim. If you would have said to me at the beginning of the year, towards the end of the year, you're going to be a top three team, you're going to be in a cup, and you're going to be playing in the playoffs. I would have took it, to be honest with you. Yeah, we all want more, but you know what? I think, I think as a squad, we're doing well, and I think the one thing that the fans will take from all of this is even when we've been on the road uh, and it's been difficult do you know what this squad seriously we never stop playing until it's all over and it doesn't matter whether it's two goals six goals or nine goals in it do you know what we'll keep going at that net and we'll keep trying to provide entertainment and we'll try to make sure the fans you know appreciate what we're all trying to do so you know I, I think we'll be there or thereabouts as I always say sorry well, I've just been a fickle hockey fan for 50 years. I expect them to challenge for the league. I expect them to challenge for the cup. I expect them to challenge for the playoffs. And they're not letting me down. Simple as that. Not at all. I don't think any of us are letting you down. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? I mean, really, you, you're, just, you're, gonna, you're just gonna go out there and just, you're hockey players, you're sportsmen, you're athletes, you're professionals. You, you, yeah. you, you, don't, you can't think any other way. No, I mean, we, we want to uh, perform in every shift and, and in every game. Every battle, that's like how we're uh, put together, actually. So I think that's pretty common for every hockey player. Right, we're moving on. We've got Guildford on Wednesday. It'll be another tough one. Away, Away from home on Wednesday. Don't anybody. Yeah. Please don't no, have more no, coming here, Jim. Yeah, see you all next Sunday, 5.30. Don't be late. Bye. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we've got for this episode of Phoenix TV. But remember, if you've got any questions you want answering, you can submit them via the usual ways, by text, by email, and, of course, the official Phoenix Forum. Now, don't forget to keep up to date with everything that's going on in the world with the Phoenix on the official Facebook page, Twitter account, and also the official Phoenix website. And for something a little bit quirkier, why not check out the official Phoenix podcast? Now, our next game is on the 24th of February. It's against the Swindon Wildcats, a team that knows how to score goals and we have usually pretty good games with, so we need as many people down here and cheering on the boys and hopefully get that win. But from me and everyone else here at the rink, we'll see you soon. <laughs>